Pastor Jeff, I hope you're doing well. Uh, are you getting excited about uh, our Knights of the North Castle Bible School? I am, and I hope to see you tomorrow night at the, the North Castle at 6.30. Um, our uh, Bible verse uh, for the, the, the Bible School, our banner verse is, is this. It's from Ephesians 6, and it says, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And the way we do that uh, is by putting on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Now, who is this devil uh, that Paul is writing about? Well, we call him Satan or the devil, and that is the enemy of God and really the enemy of you and me as well. And the devil wants to, um, uh, to hurt us. And one of the ways the devil hurts us is by tricking us and deceiving us and even getting us to, to tell lies or things that aren't true. And one of the ways that the devil wins is when we don't uh, know how much God loves us and, and we feel really bad about ourselves. That can be one of the ways that the devil hurts us. Um, well, I've got, uh, I've got these pants on here, speaking of not feeling good about ourselves. And when I stand up with these pants, they, they tend to slide down and uh, I could look pretty silly. So I put them back up and here's, here's the way I fix that problem. I put on my, my belt. And then it keeps my pants up so they don't slide down and make me look silly. Uh, Paul wrote something about that too for protecting ourselves in the Bible. And right after he tells us to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, he says, Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Uh, one of the sayings we had for when uh, you look silly is um, uh, you got caught with your pants down. And I wear a belt so that I don't get caught with my pants down. Uh, but the belt of truth isn't really just a belt like this. The belt of truth is really wrapping the truth of God and, and the truth around ourselves. Uh, so the, the challenge this week um, is to armor up with truth. And that is to, to do our best to, to tell the truth and... That's not just to our family and friends, but that's also to God and to live in the truth that he loves us. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us so much. And that's the most important truth of all. I am excited about Bible school and I hope you are too. Uh, let me pray for you and it right now. Uh, dear Lord, again, as always, I thank you for our children. I do pray that you would bless our, our Bible school that's coming up um, uh, this evening. And I pray that, uh, that you would bless the children who are part of it. And Lord, I just pray that the truth of your love for them would shine through uh, each and every day of their lives. And this I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Would you please bow with me in prayer? Oh, gracious God, we pray for your holy church universal, that you would be pleased to fill it with all truth in all peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, 
direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, establish it. Where it is in want, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of him who died and rose again, and ever lives to make intercession for us, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught his first disciples to pray the prayer that we now join together and pray as one. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 14a. Uh, I'm reading from the NIV. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. A reading from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 12 through 18. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. This evening, the kids in Bible school will get to see what happens to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hint, King Nebuchadnezzar does throw them into the fiery furnace. Spoiler alert, things turn out all right for the three young men. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They just couldn't lie. When powerful King Nebuchadnezzar asked, Is it true you will not worship my gods and my idol? They had to say, It is true. Even though the king held their lives in his hand, They stayed true to God and told the truth. They could have avoided the heat, literally. Even with the threat of death, they said, we can only worship our God, the one true God. One simple, false statement, dishonest act, could have saved them from the fiery furnace, but they stayed true. This week, our children's Bible school castle call is Armor Up With Truth. How important is the truth these days? Is it still important to us, to our country? Most importantly, is it still important to God? Our key scripture passage, our banner verse for Bible school is Ephesians 6.10. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. The next verses tell us how and why. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, 
with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. The children will be learning about different pieces of spiritual armor that will keep them strong in the Lord as they go through life. The belt of truth is the focus this week. As Paul wrote this letter to the church at Ephesus, he very likely was looking at Roman soldiers because he was in prison as he wrote it. A soldier's belt was put on over his undergarments. It supported and protected his body's core and was also used to attach other pieces of his gear. Paul is saying that the truth secures us and is the foundation for the other pieces of armor the children will learn about. Paul obviously thought truth was critical to our spiritual well-being. As often happens, when I go through the week with a sermon theme on my mind, I see that theme pop up everywhere. That was definitely the case this week. Here are some sayings that came up this week in my class at Bethel and in my reading. The truth is the truth, even if no one believes it. A lie is a lie, even if everyone believes it. Better to be hurt with truth than confronted by lies, than comforted by lies. And a church sign I saw said, if the truth hurts, it just might be working. There is a difference between a truth and an opinion. There is likely a difference between the truth and what someone said they heard someone else saying. I just made that one up myself there. You want the truth? You can't handle the truth. And here are a couple of quotes from wise philosophers. Wisdom is found only in truth. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. And truth is like the sun. You can shut it out for a while, but it ain't going away. The famous philosopher Elvis Presley. Since we are focusing on truth with the children, let me start with us asking some questions about the truth. Do you think it is important that children learn the value of the truth? And if so, why? How important is it that adults value and tell the truth? And what happens if the truth is not valued in a country? The names of the main communist and Soviet newspapers in the Soviet Union were Pravda and Izvestia, which means the truth and the news. A popular saying among the people was, there's no truth in Pravda and no news in Izvestia. And does anyone remember what happened to the Soviet Union? But more personally, how important is the truth to you? Does it bother you when people tell you things that aren't true? And again, even more importantly, how much does the truth matter to God? Why do people lie? Well, people lie for political gain and people lie for financial gain, but people also lie simply to look good in front of others. The Ash experiment is a famous one in the social scientists, in the sciences. Individual volunteer subjects are brought into a room with five other people and placed in the last seat in a line. The group is presented a visual like the one you see here. The leader of the experiment asks the group to match the first line with a line of the same length, either A, B, or C. In this case, the correct answer is B. The correct answer is meant to be fairly obvious. What the volunteer subject doesn't know is that the other five people are part of the experiment. Dr. Ash found out that if the first five people in the group say the correct answer is A, not B, by the time the subject is called on for their answer, many of them will say A rather than go against the group. Why not just say B, the correct answer? Well, what do you think? It's either they can't see the truth because of peer pressure, or they don't have the strength to go against the group and say what is really true. Telling the truth isn't always easy, that's for sure. But over and over, the Bible tells us to live in the truth, seek the truth, tell the truth. I shared that when I wrestle with anxiety, I often turn to Philippians 4, verses 4 through 8. Paul ends that passage by encouraging us to think about things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and worthy of praise. Paul says one of the most important things to consider about our thoughts is, are they true? Too often our thoughts are just not true. The research is clear. Human beings have the ability to both ignore risks they don't want to face and the ability to fear things that are not likely to happen. And we are good at ignoring evidence that shows us we might be wrong. 
The biggest lies we swallow, though, are the lies that our enemy, the devil, deceives us with. Primarily that God doesn't love us and have what's best for us in mind. Paul writes, we need to focus on what is authentic, real, and lines up with God's word. I agree with Paul. Set our minds on things that are true. Our faith needs to be and can be based on truth. Individual lives, like the lives of a nation, are built on sinking sand when they are built on things that aren't true. I am concerned for our country. We are at a critical juncture in our history where we are wrestling with the importance of truth. When political expediency or financial gain become more important than the truth, as important as political success and financial well-being are, we are in trouble as a nation. And the issue of truth is not just critical when it comes to politics or finance. Even in the church, we can wrestle with what is true. A saying I've gone by in my academic pursuit And one I try to live by is this, all truth is God's truth. Christians should not be afraid to seek the truth because they should not be afraid of the truth. In our read through the Bible calendar, we are in the book of John. John writes a lot about the truth. Just this week in our calendar reading, we see Jesus several times saying, I tell you the truth. When you see those words, it's always good to stop and read them twice. Passages in the Gospel of John that people are likely to recognize include these. Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Another verse is John. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus is the truth, and the truth is we need Jesus. God hates dishonesty. God hates lying. God hates hypocrisy, but God loves us and wants us to live in the truth. The truth is all of us fall short of being completely honest. And a partial truth is not the truth. As human beings, we even have a hard time being completely honest with ourselves. Most of us are good at deceiving ourselves at times, and the primary weapon of the devil is deceit. The truth may hurt, but the devil's lies can kill our souls. God calls us to honesty and integrity, and the first step is to admit it when we aren't honest. We then have the opportunity to repent and seek God's forgiveness. Jesus died to give us the healing power of God's forgiveness. There is so much about the truth and its importance in the Bible. Here are a couple ways to armor up with truth this week. First, claim God's truths. It might be a good idea to create an image of Ephesians 6.10 or a similar passage and have it on your phone to look at the first thing in the morning and throughout the uh, the day this week. Or you could write it on a 3 by 5 card and place it next to your bed or on your bathroom mirror so that you can be reminded first thing in the morning that God is with you and you can live in his strength. You can even paste the verse as a reminder in your calendar or schedule it as an alarm on your phone. The goal of Bible school is to teach children biblical truth through stories and activities that will help them as they go through life. God's word, when it becomes a part of their lives, has power. Seeing God's truth in scripture verses first thing in the morning and throughout the day can give you power too. It can help you see and think truth and be able to focus on eternal truths instead of the temporary problems and the hassles that can tear you down or burden you in your day. We can choose to set our mind on God and his strength, or we can choose to set our mind on ourself and our problems and weakness. If we allow our thoughts to be consumed by self or with our circumstances, what will we often feel in the end? Discouraged. By contrast, if we choose to pray and seek the Lord instead, there can be peace, hope, and strength. As we make our daily choices, let's trust in the strength of the one who made both the day and you. I have some truth tellers in my life, and I am grateful to God for them. But here is my challenge to truth tellers. Speak the truth in love. Yes, sometimes the truth hurts. When Kathy got the call from her nurse practitioner with the results from her brain scan, she told Kathy to go with me to our car immediately, and she would give us the results there. The truth was there was a large mass on Kathy's brain. And I am glad she told us the truth but I also appreciate that she shared the news in a way that also showed concern and compassion for us. 
And while quite large, she also told us the truth that it was probably benign. And then she gave us instructions for things we could do. It is true that we are all sinners. I have even been yelled at through a microphone with that truth as I walked by. I am sure some people have been saved that way, but it put me off. I don't remember Jesus yelling at lost sinners that way. He was more likely to become their friend first. And Jesus always loved people enough to show them the way to address the hard truths in their lives. When you speak the truth, are you speaking it in love? Are you sharing it with the intent of helping people? Without love, words of truth can actually damage relationships and undermine the good the truth might do. If you can't say it in love, maybe it's best not to say it at all. Remember, speaking the truth in love is God's way. Some people think that God wants to take the fun out of life. They think God just wants to give us a list of things not to do and take the excitement out of our lives. It is true that one of the things on God's not-to-do list is the ninth commandment. God commands us not to bear false witness. That basically means God is telling us not to lie about people or lie to people. Would not telling lies take the fun out of your life? If so, I'm a little worried for you. Less lying in this world would make all of our lives better. Instead of making life dull, telling the truth can make your life more exciting. Telling King Nebuchadnezzar the truth sure made Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's life more exciting. Living honestly and living in God's truth doesn't make life dark and dull. It sets us free. It takes away the burden of guilt. It frees us from the fear of ever getting caught in a lie. The truth not only sets us free, ultimately the truth will win out. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood strong in the Lord and in his mighty power by staying true to God. They wouldn't lie to King Nebuchadnezzar about what they believed and who they worshipped. And God was with them and carried them through the fire. Let's stay strong in the Lord and in his mighty power too. One of the ways we stand firm is by putting on the belt of truth. This week, let's join the children and armor up with truth. Amen. Letting go of every single dream, I lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changes what you see. I try to win this war, I confess. My hands are weary. Mighty warrior, king of the fight. No matter what I face, you're by my side. When you don't move the mountains, I need you to move. When you don't move the mountains, I need you to move.
And now to him who by means of his power working in us is able to do so much more than we can ever ask for or even think of. To God be the glory in the church and in Jesus Christ for all time, forever and ever. Amen.